attempted comeback. Uh, everything that has been thought of, when you put the right guy on the job, like Rob, he thinks of everything. And, uh, and he's done the best he can to keep all of you safe. And common sense does come in handy, too, in between all of this, doesn't it? If there's an adjustment that has to be done, uh, and he, if, you know, please do it. Uh, because we want everybody to be, to be safe and healthy and, uh, and to enjoy themselves here uh, during church service. I am so grateful that one of the things, Elder Carter, I'm so grateful for, that you're the stewardship or was the stewardship leader. I think Rob is now. The, the, the finances have been in fairly good shape while we've been gone for a couple months. And I really appreciate that from all those people out here and those people at our home. That's a, that's a real blessing, isn't it? And uh, some of you, did anybody uh, see downstairs yet? Raise your hand. Anybody go downstairs today? How was it? It's like a different world, isn't it? Uh, it's an amazing thing. And uh, I really, I really when, I saw, when I saw that floor go in and the walls painted and the, and the lights go in, I said, man, this is nice. <laughs> it's really nice. So uh, all of you folks uh, made all of this possible. And it, it was needed. It really was. And, and the roof was put on while you were gone. Uh, because right where, right about the fourth pew, the uh, water was dripping down when it rained. So we uh, had, uh, had to take care of that. Um, I guess I might as well mention this. Mother's Day is long gone, but uh, for those of you who have not received your Mother's Day gift, uh, we invite you uh, to come up here and, and get your item here at the end of the church service. You don't have to get it right now. We're not going to have the kids come up here for children's story. Um, I don't even know if there is going to be a children's story today other than up on there. I don't know. There's going to be a children's story. Good. And so we're going to have that. Uh, one other thing. Uh, in the bulletin, we're going to form pre nominating committee next Sabbath. Everything's going to be done via Zoom. Uh, no meetings that will be taking place downstairs at this, po- at this time. Um, that's the se- simplest and safest way I can think of doing it is via Zoom. So next week, you'll all receive a piece of paper. You're going to put five names down. It doesn't make any difference uh, with pre-nominating committee, whether you've been on it 10 years in a row. It's pre-nominating committee. It's just to pick uh, people. You'll have a list. Uh, we'll, we'll, those of you who are going to be on the email, uh, on, the pre, on the nominating committee itself are going to be, have emailed all the information. You'll have it at home. And I think it'll be uh, easier, actually, for you to do it via Zoom than it would be to come here um, as far as time-wise and uh, all the prep that it takes to get in the car and come here and then go home and, and uh, all that stuff. So we will begin pre kitty next week. We're not going to, unfortunately, be able to start with the new officers July 1 like we had hoped to. Uh, it's going to be delayed a couple weeks. So uh, if all of you could just hold on for a couple extra weeks in July... Uh, with your positions, I'd really, really appreciate it uh, because it's just going to be too much confusion um, otherwise. And uh, so please um, hold on for a couple of weeks in July before you give up your positions. One of the things the nominating committee will be doing, as they have been doing recently, is they, we will call and see if you would you like to hold on to your position so that we don't have to be um, starting from scratch necessarily. Uh, we will be just changing those those names that need to be changed on next year's nominating committee. Uh, With that, I don't think I have anything else I need to mention, guys, um, other than welcome again to our service. And uh, I'm really excited. Uh, We're doing a series now, as all of you know, on the the promise of the Holy Spirit. Um, Today is number six. Uh, There'll probably be a few more after that, and then we'll go into other revival-type topics because I really believe that we're on the very knife's edge of eternity. I really do, guys. Um, this coronavirus is going to be handled, but this is going to be the last thing that comes our way. Uh, but this is kind of probably a warm-up uh, for us to really search our hearts to see really where we're at uh, with our Lord. So with that, I'm going to uh, turn it over to our uh, praise team. Well, with all that's going on, you know... COVID-19, civil unrest in so many places today. 
In times like these, we need a Savior, don't we? Number 593, if you're in your hymnal, okay, number 593, we'll sing first and last verses. In times like these, Danny, are you out there? I thought you were going to join us today for song service, and I hope you will. In times like these, a Savior in times like these over here, Danny. You need an anchor, be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus, yes, He's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. In times like these, I have a Savior. In times like these, I have an anchor, I'm very sure, I'm very sure, my anchor holds and grips the solid rock, this rock is Jesus, yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. I'm very sure, I'm very sure. My anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Oh, so good to hear the congregation singing again. Very good. Oh, life is so sweet. When we trust him, isn't it? It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Number 524. First and third verses. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus Just to take him at his word Just to rest upon his promise Just to know with the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I've proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Yes, it is sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease, just from Jesus in the taking, life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I've proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Not quite as full of church as we're used to, but we know there are people out there who belong to our congregation who are watching and others too, and we welcome you also. Because we trust him so completely, we can fix our minds on another time, can't we? Soon coming. Let's stand together as we sing. A song that was written by the inspired writings of William Miller, one of our pioneers. I have fixed my mind on another time, on another time. And here I mean to stand until God is with your life. And that is today, today, today. 
here this morning. We thank you for the opportunity to come and worship in a society that still is free to let us worship the way we, we desire to be. We know the time is coming, Lord, where that will not be true. How soon and how long? I don't know, Father, neither of us here do, but you know the hour. And now I know you're calling upon all of our hearts to prepare for that time uh, when the loud cry needs to begin. So, Father, we just pray that your spirit will will find room in our hearts that we truly may de desire to be baptized in fire. In Jesus' name, amen. Be seated, please. morning children at home I guess we got a couple here um, so this morning <clears throat> my uh, my story is more of a talk not only to our little ones but to our medium ones our little big ones and even our big elder ones just across the board um, as summer uh, begins school just finished right so we have our children at home, spending a little bit more time at home. And I came uh, across this very interesting question that asks, can I do whatever I want when I'm older or when I grow up? You know, as children, a lot of times, especially when we get upset of our parents or our teachers or our elders, first thing we do is, wait till I get old. I will be able to eat all the candy I want. I'm gonna stay up as late as I want right playing games watching tv well what happens the next day we pay for it right or they pay for it and as parents we pay for it too though so we have two young ones here or young ones here so what i'd like for them to do is if you don't mind and at home if you're watching at home is to take off your shoes or parents help them take off the shoes and the two that we have here i want them to stand on their pew at the, on the pew but without shoes Young ones, little ones. We have, <laughs> okay? So if you stand, we can see them. They're about this tall, right? And if they stand on the pew, look how much taller they get, right? So usually this happens during the summer. I don't know why. But little ones seem to grow during the summer. I don't know if it's because we don't see them for a long time or the heat or the extra sleep they get. But I remember, um, well, he's not here today, but I remember Ty. Ty's been in this church, what, three years? 
And he was maybe this big when he first came here, if you're watching, and now he's like this big, right? Grow real fast. Oh, we got a couple more back here, yeah? So can I do whatever I want when I get older? That's the question, right? So some kids, when they grow up, they want to do anything they want, and they think that as adults, right? You guys, well, you know, adults do whatever they want. So when I grow up, I'm going to do those things. But the Bible tells us differently, right? It says that uh, it gives us the Ten Commandments for us to obey. And as parents, we try to teach you guys to uh, train you to listen and to obey to these laws. Because rules and laws are always going to be there. They're different as we grow, but they're always going to be there. A lot of times we say, oh, when I go to boarding school, I'm going to be free. Guess what? Eh, they got a lot of rules in boarding school, right? When I go to college, I'm going to be free, do whatever I want. Eh, guess what? They got rules there. When I go live on my own, guess what? The rules there, right? Everywhere we go, there's some rules and regulations. So as parents, now I'll talk to the parents, we need to help our children, right? To train them to be comfortable in listening and obeying the laws. When God gave us the Ten Commandments, he gave them to all the people of all ages. And you little ones, right, um, people are watching you. And you guys can set an example, even a better example as the adults. First Timothy 4.12, do you have it up? Says, do not let anyone think little one, uh, think little of you because you're young. Be their example. Let them follow the way you teach and live. Be a part of them in your love, your faith, and your clean thoughts. Nothing better than the love of a young one in our lives, right? Thank you. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. And it's so good to see those of you who've come today in the audience. Our scripture reading this morning is found over in Matthew, the seventh chapter, and the 21st to the 23rd verses. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Carol called me and asked that uh, I have the uh, prayer request. She could not be here. But before I do that, I do want to just mention that uh, Rob, I called Rob to make sure on our procedures. Uh, and he said, of course, if we all will follow the procedure of the distancing, wearing of masks, except for those, of course, who are right here on the platform, that this will go a long ways. And I might mention also that as far as possible, if you're going to visit, of course, keep the distance, but you probably, after the service, need to go outside uh, to, to visit. So uh, let's keep at least our wrist to a minimum. And uh, then as the days go on, possibly the restrictions will ease a bit. But for right now, we want to be very careful, don't we, that uh, we follow the correct procedures to minimize any risk, and we know the Lord will guide in a wonderful way. 
The other thing I want to mention is we do appreciate the support. Those of you who are online, as well as those who are here today, have given for our uh, church budget during this time. It has really been wonderful. And I want to add my praise, too, to uh, those who've worked, particularly to Rob Young, to Dick Soucy, uh, to Ed Lowther, who put in the lighting. But really, there are scores of others when we think of those who've helped both on the school and on the lower level, and how wonderful the lower level uh, does look at this time. Well, it is prayer time, and uh, there is power in prayer. I realized that yesterday in a real way. Uh, Jeanette has been experiencing AFib for the last five months, and you, many of you uh, can sympathize with her. She's planning a oblation at Piedmont a week from Tuesday. But yesterday, she knew she was going to have to play the organ today, and she really felt bad. <laughs> she really didn't feel up to it, did you, at all? And as we got together for lunch, uh, Jeanette just was impressed to say, well, uh, why don't we pray that if it's the Lord's will that I would, uh, it would be in a, uh, a condition where my rhythm would be in normal <laughs> for this, at least this weekend. So uh, we did, we prayed. Now, God doesn't always give us the time and place. We know that. We ask many times and he doesn't just answer when we think he should. But Jeanette took a short nap yesterday, and she was back in rhythm, and is in bed in rhythm today. <laughs> so, so we do pray, praise the Lord, don't we? God is good. He does hear our prayers. We know that in a very, uh, a very special way. Uh, the prayer request that Carol has given me uh, are those that we want to remember in a very special way. Beverly Nam brother had surgery this week and it was very successful. So we praise the Lord, don't we? Anna Owens' granddaughter, uh, Mahali it is, isn't it? Mahali, is that correct? Mahali. Mahali, okay. <laughs> Mahali has been very sick in the hospital with pneumonia and needs our prayers. Uh, so we need to, as a church family, remember Mahali in a very special way. Uh, continue to pray for Alvin Wallace. He will begin his uh, treatments of uh, seeding, uh, ra radiation seeding for the cancer this week. So let's remember him in a very special way uh, this week. Little Alonzia who is 30 days old today, is still fighting for her life. The doctors don't know how much longer she can hang on. So let's remember her, this little child who is very precious to the Lord. And let's remember Tom Coleman. Uh, he has stage four colon cancer. Uh, he has this tumor and spots on his liver. He is home from the hospital, but he's lost a lot of weight, uh, and he is uh, with his wife, Pat Patricia, so let's continue to place him before the Lord this week as well. 
uh, Rondon is doing very well after two stints. And so we want to thank the Lord for that, don't we? And for being with him in a special way. Uh, also, Isidro Cabrero has uh, cousins, I believe it is, that have uh, the virus. So let's remember them in a special way. Continue to remember Wayne Woods, Jan Henderson, Pastor Howell, Carolyn Marshman, Mary Anderson, Ron Vincent, Chris Cleveland, and Brenda, and many others. God knows. How many of you uh, have silent requests and would like to raise your hands on these? Well, let's as far as uh, possible kneel for prayer this morning as we seek the Lord. Heavenly Father, we do come to you this Sabbath morning so grateful that we're able to conduct a regular church service again. And we have missed the fellowship together, and we just thank you for each one that has come that we may all receive a special blessing. We pray that you will guide and direct our nation at this time. We realize that here in Atlanta and in other cities there has been disturbance yesterday and last night. We do pray that justice will be done, but we also pray that somehow that these terrible events will not drive us further apart. But through your Holy Spirit, that we would see the need of all being drawn together as one community. We pray also that you will be with each one of the requests that have been made. We pray that you will guide and direct we think of Tom Coleman in a special way. We think of Alvin, and we pray for him. We pray for Anna's niece in a special way, her granddaughter. We pray that you will guide and direct in that case. But there are other that have been mentioned and there are silent requests that only you know. And we do pray earnestly that your name would be glorified and that each case would be answered according what you see would bring the best result. So we pray for this in every way. We also pray for Pastor Howell this morning. And we do pray that his message on the Holy Spirit would touch our hearts. It is the time that we need to look for a special outpouring of this Spirit on all of us. Because it is only this that will bring us to the revival in our hearts and lives and into the church that we need so that the work can be finished and we can all go home. But now we pray for 
our church at this time. We pray for those that are here and those that are at home. And we pray for this situation with the coronavirus. We pray earnestly that it must, might subside all around the world and that the way would be open to give a special meaning and a special outpouring of your spirit so that many would be brought to Jesus. And then when Jesus comes, we give you the glory and the honor throughout all of eternity. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I do not know what we're going to be doing next, but uh, I will try to... Are we going to be collecting the offering at the end? Yeah, it is time for the special music, I believe is correct. At this time, is there any other offering? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, and my problem is that, uh, obviously, just getting back the one who was to have the second eldership did not uh, show up, so it is my fault. Uh, the, the offering, as you see, I believe is church budget today, isn't it? Pardon? Oh, yeah, Cahutta Springs. And I think all of you have been to Cahutta Springs, uh, or many of you. How many of you have not been to Cotta Springs? Can I see your hand? I don't see a hand. <laughs> so it means that all of us are utilizing this. So we can be thankful for it. And uh, I also want to say how much it is appreciated that all of you have responded during this time to uh, continue your giving. We have six thousand, a little over six thousand dollars that has come in, and our, of course, budget. We've budgeted about a little over nine thousand. So we are still a little short. And this is the last Sabbath of May, but we know that. Uh, so many of you have been faithful and do be faithful as you give today. Hopefully we can, can reach our budget for the month. Uh, so we do appeal that each one uh, would give as the Lord has blessed us. Yes, that's right. And the box is outside, so give as, as you go out. Uh, the box is outside, and you just put your offering in the box. And make sure to remind you by the you can get the link to text service. Okay. Uh, so let us uh, pray at this time. Heavenly Father, we do come to you so thankful for all of your blessings to us. We pray earnestly that you will guide us. But as you bless us, we pray that we also might open up our hearts and our lives to return to you, not because of compulsion, not because we're pressured to do so, but as a response in love for your great gifts that you give us every single day. So guide as we give, both online, as we give 
today at the close of the service. Do bless each one, and may both the gift and the giver be blessed. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. At this time, I believe Sylvia will, uh, Sylvia DeFries, uh, our daughter, <laughs> will be having our special music on the flute.
almost like getting ready to get out of bed in the morning, taking a shower and everything, isn't it? Let's pray. Loving Father, as we continue in our journey about this promise of the Holy Spirit, we pray, Lord, that by your grace you will continue to guide us today, that we truly may be baptized in fire. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as you know, uh, last week we began talking about uh, strange fire. We didn't get through it very far, and uh, today we're going to really get into the full meaning of strange fire. Some of you already know what I'm going to talk about. Some of you don't. Some of you think you know, but you may not know uh, all that I'm going to say today. So I think there's something here for all of us to learn, regardless of how long uh, you've been a Seventh-day Adventist. As you remember last week, uh, we uh, talked about John the Baptist. He baptized... uh, for repentance, but he says, after me, there's one who comes who's going to baptize you in fire. Very important difference that is going on there. And uh, we learned that uh, this, this presence of fire, if you look through the scriptures about fire, the burning bush, Mount Carmel, uh, the tongues of fire, it all represents the presence of God. Very important to know that, that it's just not just a symbol, uh, an ordinary symbol, it's a symbol of the presence of God. Very important to know that. So when when John tells everybody that he's gonna, he only baptizes for repentance, and one who comes after me is going to be baptized with fire, he's talking about a very significant thing. We talked about baptism, the two words together, baptism means that immersion uh, is present, that there's an actual immersion in this fire. And as, we, as I said a moment ago, this fire is a representation of God, immersion in the presence of God, the presence of Jesus. And we know the Holy Spirit is going to represent Jesus in these last days. What an amazing concept uh, the Bible gives us about the intensity that God wants Seventh-day Adventists in the last days in order to carry out the loud cry to have experienced in their lives. Just to be baptized in repentance ain't going to get it, folks. It ain't going to get it. You need to be, we need to be baptized in fire. The Bible tells us that that, that began already 2,000 years ago. So what, ha- what went wrong? Well, you see, you can't ask for something you don't know exists, right? If you don't know what baptism of fire really is, the presence of God, and you don't don't know that you're supposed to be merged in the presence of God, which really makes a difference as far as me walking through my daily walk, recognizing I have the presence of God, Mr. Susie, in my life day long. I better be careful what I'm doing here because I don't want to bring reproach upon my salvation with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we we have an interesting idea the Bible presents very clearly. David talked about how he wanted to hold on to the Holy Spirit in his life. And notice all the action verbs that are going on here. This is not a stagnant process. There's action going on in this process. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your generous spirit. Notice he says generous spirit of all things. God is a generous God. Morning by morning, God wants us to ask God, cry out to God, create in me a clean heart, O God. Now more than ever, this church is to have that experience because now is the time for us to really take what God says in the scriptures to heart. There is something about being alone with God when we cry out to God, create in me a clean heart. You don't do that. That's that's a private prayer. This is a private presentation between you and the Lord. It's just between you and Him where you really talk about what's really going on, what you know is wrong in your life that nobody else needs to know. Morning by morning, there's something special about that aloneness where you're not distracted. You know, there will be a genuine and a counterfeit manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the last days. Period. I want the genuine, don't you? I don't want to be fooled by what seems to be the Holy Spirit, Elder Carter, but isn't. I need to get my... We're the people of the book, folks. This is not a time for us to think about it any other way. How can you tell the difference between the genuine and the counterfeit? That's important to know. I really think it would be, even if you've been a baptized member for 100 years. It's one thing to be afraid of the counterfeit that you that you reject the genuine. That has happened so long in our church, I think, where people are so afraid of the counterfeit that they even reject the genuine because they want nothing to do with it. 
I mean, that's Pentecostal. We don't want that. And it's another thing, my friends, to be so caught up with the counterfeit that you miss the genuine. We're in, great, we're in a great danger nowadays of the young people falling into that trap. This thing about dead religion. You got a dead religion, mom and dad. Your church is boring. You know, I don't want that. I, I want a real experience with God, dad. I don't want this contemplative stuff, stuff going on. I want, I want to see action. Because the movies and everything are promoting that, aren't they? Life of action, you know, that's why people love football, action going on. It's not, not a boring game, it's people getting hurt and everything. Everybody likes to see gladiators fight it out. So you can substitute the counterfeit for the genuine and be deceived, my friends. We really can be. The true baptism of the Holy Spirit is based on God's Word, which leads to a deeper experience with God and thus obedience to Jesus' will. Take that to the bank, folks. If, if your experience with God is not calling you for obedience to God's will, you're in the wrong religion. You're in the wrong context. This is the true baptism. The Holy Spirit leads you to all truth, doesn't it? John 14 tells us when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to lead me to all, church, Elder, all truth, Elder Carter. I mean, I, I can take that to the bank. I know that that's something that God wants me to do. Truth is not there just to be a good idea. It's to be an experience in our lives. So it's always based on God's word and always leads to obedience to God's word. That's the true experience with baptism and fire in the Holy Spirit, my friends. The counterfeit baptism of the Spirit is based on emotion. Now we're beginning to talk about strange fire here. The counterfeit baptism of the Spirit is based on emotion and leads to a fascination with signs and miracles more than obedience. Did you hear what I just said? This is really going on right now. And it's coming into our church. We don't want it in this church here, do we? The counterfeit baptism of the Spirit is based on emotion and leads to a fascination with signs and miracles. That's because that's where all the action movies are. That's where all the, all of the, the way we're being programmed by Hollywood to be that way. That, that's the way people, people want to hear music that's, that's agitating, that's got a lot of emotion in it. Nothing wrong with emotion, my friends, but you don't base your Christian experience on just pure emotion. Not that there's going to be any emotion, but, but, it, but a wordless, a godless emotion is a bad thing. It really is. You know, so one is, so is, one is based on God's word and leads to the fruits of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, temperance, goodness, kindness, meekness, humility, all those things. And the counterfeit is based on emotion, not God's word, and is fascinated with signs, wonders, and miracles. In the crisis hour of earth's history, Satan will attempt to pass off a religious counterfeit in the, in the Christian church. Did you hear what I said? He's going to try to pass off a counterfeit in the Christian church. It's no longer out there, folks. We can tell the difference between left and right. No, it's in the church itself. God, Satan is going to try to pass that off. It's going to be used even by, by people who want to draw up crowds. They're going to begin to say, how can I get people interested in coming to my church? I got to stand on my head, maybe. I got to, I got to do all kinds. Of, I got to really be emotional. I got to, I got to, people got to really start, start, hallelujah and all this stuff. Nothing wrong with hallelujahs, but my friends, but if you base it all on hallelujahs, and, just, and that's supposed to be a fervor that's based only on emotion, you're in the wrong church. It's not something that you want to, you want to be a part of. Satan is, understands, understands the postmodern world the postmodern mind. In this postmodern world, the motto is seeing is believing. Science has taken its, its negative side of it, it's taken its effect on us. Nothing wrong with science per se, science is a great thing, but when science is used as a substitute for God's word or to disavow God's word, or if science is used a seeing and believe it mentality and you can't see the Holy Spirit, why should you believe in it? That's why Jesus says you can't see, but you can see the effects of it. He said that to Nicodemus. He said that we've got to take our scriptures to heart, folks. Oh, it's all been explained to us. We've got to stop playing around and understand that, it's, that, that the Satan has studied the mind for 6,000 years. And he knows it. And because he knows it, he's been studying for 6,000 years. He knows what people want. And he says to that postmodern mindset, you want to see something in action? He says, I'll show you. So he does miracles here and there. 
We'll talk more about miracles in both the church and outside the church, the true church and the untrue true church. We live in an instant generation. We're in a TV society. People develop short attention spans. The alpha wave modality of, of flashing lights and all those things is a real experience, my friends, where the mind gets turned off and suggestive ideas are be able to, to come into your mind because of flashing lights and all the, the things that go on to stimuli. And we also have a Christianity that has, that has the action movies and it calls for, but, but God calls us to, for reading and prayer and reflection. You see the difference already? God calls you to calm down and reading, reflection, and prayer to spend alone time with him. What are you talking about, preacher? I, I'm all worked up. I watched, I watched the, the, uh, a whole series of, of action movies this week. That's boring. Your church is boring. God isn't there. If he was there, it would be something else because we're, we're being inundated by stuff from the, from the uh, internet, from people around us that Christianity is, needs to be different than it has been in the past. This stuff about quietness and reflection is becoming something hard for people to do. You see, by beholding, your mind does become changed. If your mind is, is always taught to be agitated, when you go to bed at night, whatever you focus on is going to become your groove in your brain. When all you're thinking about is, is the weekend rather than spending time for Christ every morning, if that becomes more important than spending time with Christ in the morning, your weekend becomes more important, you're in the wrong concept of Christianity. And the devil says, I'll give you an instant religion experience that does not necessitate taking morning by morning, spending time with God's will. I'll give you a quick fix one. You don't need all that stuff about spending time with God. Come on. That stuff's baloney. We're in the modern age. That stuff's outdated. You, 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 where's the action, man? Where's the flashing lights? And I really am fearful, Mr. Susie, of what we're trying to do to our young people, even in our own church. With, with the things that the stimuli that goes on in order to keep their attention. If it doesn't lead to repentance, if you don't call the kids to repentance and confession, what good is it? What good is it, my friends? If it only goes on every once in a while, where the world is no different than us, it will not, it will not focus too much on obedience, my friends, this worldly religion. It's an instant religion. Experience will be, will be based on emotion, on signs and wonders only. It will not focus too much on transformed character either. It won't focus too much on, on things like that because that's not really where the devil wants you to be. The devil wants to get you out of his word. The devil wants to get you out of contemplating your day at the end of the day to say, Lord, how did I do? Lord, feed me with your word. Give me some, give me some, some guidance today, Lord. Help me today get through this, this world because it's getting more intense, Lord. I mean, the American way is to work yourself half to death for do 60 hours worth of work in 40 hours and get paid for 20. I mean, that's how you get better stockholders. You know, when you, when, you, when you lay people off and you do all those things where it's only about the bottom line rather than about people. The world is getting that way where it's more about the bottom line than it is about people. I mean, when you're in public and you go to, go to and I'll just an example, and I've got to be careful because I'm going to take too long again. But when you go to, to a store and only half the people are wearing masks and people don't care about social distancing, and I'm, you know, I'm a person with leukemia and all that stuff, it, it's like they don't care about me. Because the mask doesn't really protect, protect uh, uh, um, it stops you from, from getting to me, the, the vapor. And I, and I don't understand how people could even think that way. If you don't believe it, that's one thing. But if you're endangering other people's lives, what are you really thinking about? What are we thinking about? And it will not focus on, on obedience to God, and it will not focus on a transformed character in life. But it will make you feel incredibly good, this, this, this false religion, and be filled with emotion. And you'll walk out of there feeling great before the crash when you get into the parking lot and it's all over. What do I do now? Turn the radio up and get, that, get those speakers booming. You know, it makes my heart beat funny. Talk about, I, I used to have AFib, you know. Talk about your heart beating funny. Get to a guy that's got his bass speakers turned up. My heart is just like, I gotta get away from here. I'm gonna have a heart attack. 
because it's interfering with the rhythm of my heart. Really, I'm serious. It does affect the rhythm of my heart when I get against a boom boxer that's, that's next to me in the, on the street, on the stop sign, at a, at a street light. It really bothers me. It really does. And I try to get away from them as soon as I can because it, I'm wondering if I'm going to get a heart attack. It really, it's almost painful. I want to suggest to you something here, friends, that the counterfeit will come to Christianity and it will come even to us if we're not careful. Notice Leviticus, Leviticus 10. Then Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, think they had a lot of teaching. I mean, you couldn't get any closer to knowing what your job is supposed to be and why you did it than being the son of the priest that, that is uh, raising you in the, in the work. Then the, Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it, put incense on it, and offered profane fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them to do. You've got to be careful, my friends, not to, not to, to infiltrate a religious experience by the world by thinking that, that, that your religion is to, is to be fed in order to keep it interesting to other people when you're going away from the Bible. My friends, you're never going to make contemplation and prayer interesting to, to people if you don't model it. If you don't treat God with reverence when you come in here, how in the world are, you, are your kids ever going to learn about what it means to, to, to respect and love and to fear God in the way the Bible talks about how are we ever going to, going, to, going to let people know we have a holy but loving God in heaven? Well, I shouldn't say but. Holy and loving are in the same paradigm. Don't, don't forgive me. And then, here we are. We see the sons of Aaron brought up in the priesthood, and they give strange fire regardless of God's command. They knew what they were doing. God forbid that we would know what we're doing and going against God's word just because we want to model a successful gathering of people in a community setting that really has no right to be in a church itself. So there's going to be a religious counterfeit in the last days. They substituted a counterfeit religious experience for the genuine. You know, it was based on, on, uh, on strange thoughts about religion. Rather than God's converting experience of a, of a person's heart, it was based on something else. Leviticus goes on, so fire went out from God and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. You know, <clears throat> they were in the presence of God, and they dared do the things that they did. And the only way we can know that we're in the presence of God, as we really are in this room here today, is for us to spend time with him to know what this, this is really all about. I think too many Seventh-day Adventists really don't know what coming to church is all about. We're seeking a, 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 a convocation gathering in the presence of God. We really are. We're, if the Holy Spirit, if the Spirit were to be baptized in fire and we come to church on Sabbath morning, uh, we're to be in the presence of God. That's supposed to be an immersion experience, not a hand's length experience. Just because we don't see fire in here doesn't mean that the whole, God is not in here. Remember, fire was just a symbol. It wasn't God. God's not fire. But it, it, it showed broken minds, carnal minds and, and worldly minds, really with the presence of God, uh, that it was there. And we don't need that anymore. We know that God is here and is something that, that, that we are to revere and not something to treat as just an option or something we can play with. You can't play with God, my friends. We really can't. So the devil will try to counterfeit a religious experience that is as close as possible, listen to me now, as close as possible to the genuine experiences. As close as possible, Mr. Susie. That's pretty close. As possible. It doesn't get much closer than that. Because if it's close as possible, it means this is right there. You can't even tell the difference unless you look for something. I mean, you're not going to see the difference unless you know the counterfeit from the truth. See, there's, there's no way that, that, that the devil's going to do something that is going to be very obvious. It's like the idea of the devil with a tail and the pitchforks and the, and, the, and the horns and all that and a red body. Come on, he's the most beautiful angel in the universe at one time. And he still is a lot better looking than I am. See, the Bible has set up protective guidelines for us. The Bible doesn't leave us vulnerable. It leaves us protected 
2 Peter 1.19, and so we have the prophetic word confirmed. We have the prophetic, the, the, the prophetic word confirmed. It's a for surety, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. You see, my friends, God has not left us orphans. He's given us this prophetic word, and he's given us this other prophetic word, which our church is blessed to have. Are you using it? Am I using it? Whenever I preach a sermon up here, I preach in the mirror, my friends, because I know that I'm a broken piece of furniture. I know that I need Jesus every day. And the, the closer I come to him, the more I recognize my brokenness and the more I need him every day. What does prophecy say to us about what is coming? Matthew 24 tells us, for false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the very elect. Deceive, if possible, the very elect. Who are the very elect? It's supposed to be you and me, isn't it not? And the e evil times. This is going to have to be evil times. There's going to be, there's going to be a dichotomy that's going on between the people that sincerely seek God and people who do not seek God. You know, why can't the very elect be deceived? Why? Very simple, because their minds are saturated with the Word of God. Is your mind saturated every day with the Word of God, or are you just hitting them on the run and reading a, a little devotional book? Which, you know, don't get me wrong, it's got one verse at the top, I know. But that ain't, that ain't gonna get it, folks. That's not gonna get it at all. You need to spend more time in God's Word than just your little, uh, little I shouldn't talk like this, because I don't want to go against the publishers and the conference is going to fire me because I'm going against these little books that we publish every year. I'm just kidding. Maybe. Because their minds are saturated with the word of God. You see, my friends, God is very serious and is very, has done everything he needs to do. Revelation 13, 13 goes on and talks about this deception that is going to take place very soon. He performs great signs so that even that he even makes fire come down from heaven, a false manifestation of the presence of God. Because people did not understand what this fire was really all about. You, as you've been told, is a saturation in the, in the presence of God. This, my friends, is just a miracle th type thing to show that God is supportive of what's going on. You see, my friends, there's more than just God showing support when, fight, when you're in the presence of God. There is a transformation that takes place. There is a humility that takes place. There's a fruit of the Spirit that is being developed in your and my life. A totally, vastly different direction as far as the effect of the fire from God himself and false fire given by the devil himself. He even makes fire come down from heaven in the last days. So Revelation 13, 13 is talking about a false fire movement a false Holy Ghost movement in the last days. Revelation 13, 14 says this, and he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs. He has those signs again and those miracles again, which he has granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those. He says, okay, God is with us, and this is what God wants you to do. Telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image of the beast who was wounded by the sword and did live. Churches across North America are manifesting more and more godlessness. More secularism is existing among its members. And godlessness is being shown greater and greater in these last days. And the only way that you'll be able to see that is if you spend time with God every day. You won't fall for a counterfeit. But if all you are is inundating yourself, entertaining yourself on the weekend with, your, with those action movies and with, with sports and all those things, and, and uh, you gotta keep doing things all day long, and you don't want it, and you no longer wanna settle down and spend time with God, my friends, you're really on dangerous grounds. I'm a guy that can't sit still. My wife will tell you that. I know some of you men in here, I know you, you're the same way. You were in the greatest danger of all. Because, and it, typically in the Seventh-day Adventist church, there's more women than men. And probably because we're more active than the women are, and we don't like to be contemplated. It's too sissified, we think. And we don't want to spend time with God. I mean, loving God? Give me a break, man. And so we've created this boundary around us where when God speaks about loving you and to love him back, we don't know what love is. 
Because for us, we're, we're, we've, so, we've so saturated ourselves with the wrong things that we, are, we can be set up for this, my friends. Very much so. I've had people even, even tell churches that, that I have been at, you know, we don't, the music that you got there is just too doggone boring. I mean, you know, where's the action music? Where, where's the, where's the, the high energy music that's going on? Nothing wrong with that, my friends. But if that becomes your reason for coming to church and it isn't because of the word of God, you're badly mistaken. I'm badly mistaken. And the postmodern mind says, I need to see it before I can believe it. If I can touch it and I can experience it, I will believe it. But this contemplative stuff, give me a break. That's been done away with. Perhaps this scene may be happening in the near future. There'll be pestilence. There'll be hatred. There'll be racism. There'll be crisis that comes. There'll be economic problems that will come in the future. We haven't seen any of that yet, I know. And then until the bottom falls out. Society can only take this so long, especially when it picks up to a certain intensity. It costs money to take care of these things. And I'm sorry, my friends, just because somebody prints trillions of dollars out of thin air doesn't make it right. And so this pestilence and hatred and crisis and, and economic bottom falls out, it comes, and then there's a revival. I didn't say the revival, I said a revival. I'm not talking about the revival that, that Jesus is talking about that you all know about. I'm talking about a revival will take place because something's wrong here. Something's wrong here. We need God to help us with this. We've done everything we can to solve these problems. It isn't getting any better. We try to tell people to stay away from each other, but they crowd the beaches with no masks on. They want to keep the crisis going. We tell people to, to, uh, to be careful about what they do, to sanitize, but they don't want to do it because they think it's political. They make this thing a political problem when actually, my friends, this could be all gone in two weeks if everybody would just follow the rules. And then this false revival takes place. It's not rooted in God's word, but instead it's based on signs and wonders and leading people away from God to the beast power. And the postmodern mind says, that's just what we're looking for. Not that boring Christian stuff about repentance, confession, spending time with God and being immersed in His presence and contemplating my day and spending time in prayer and learning how to pray more and more and longer and longer with more feeling and more and less distractions, becoming closer to God. No, no, we want this stuff that's, that keeps us going to give me some happiness in my life. I'm not a happy person. I need something to get my emotions going because when my emotions are going, I fool myself to thinking I'm better off. That's what we want. This is exactly what we want to bring society together. This is what we need because the religions that are around us that speak the loudest, they ain't helping us. We need, we need more than that. Can you see what Satan is doing? What he wants to do? The agency Satan uses to deceive many people during Earth's final hours is miracles. It really will be. Now, don't misunderstand. God can work miracles too. But that's not all you base it on. What kind of people are performing the miracles? Jesus, Jesus performed miracles, didn't he? And in the last days, they'll be done again, but we won't be the source of them. Jesus will still be the source. But Jesus' miracles did not lead people to be contrary to his word. He didn't say, walk this way, contrary to the word. The, the, the book has been changed. That's all done away with. No. God, the miracles that Jesus will perform will be done by people that point to Jesus Christ, that the fruits of the spirits will be seen in their lives, where they won't, it won't be look at me mentality, it'll be look at him. They won't lead people contrary to his word. The signs and wonders that the Holy Spirit will work come through men and women who are seeking His grace and face because of an authentic experience with Him, a selfless experience, one that brings Him the glory and not, my, uh, not ourselves. But the Holy Spirit exalts Jesus and leads us into a deeper relationship with Him. The genuine Holy Spirit comes to testify of Christ in our lives. 
the fruits of the Spirit will be seen. Character transformation will be seen in the people that do these miracles in the last days. There will be a big difference, the haughtiness and the proudness, and look at, this is the way to go, and you guys, these guys are holding us back, is not going to be exempt, not going to be shown, exemplified in these people, but in those that are contrary to God's word, it will be seen more and more, that haughty attitude. Satan's counterfeit spirit comes from those who exalt self. This leads to a false religious excitement. People will flock to it because Hollywood has promoted that. Stimulation to become, thinking that you know, because they're so depressed, to be happy, they've got to be stimulated all the time. And regular Christianity, because it's so, so counter to their, to their the grooves in their brain, the, the, the ways that they view life between true and false has been totally removed. Do you notice a difference between the two experiences? The Holy Spirit exalts Jesus. The counterfeit spirit says, look at me. The genuine spirit leads to a witness for Jesus Christ, a transformation of character of the person whose life it's in. A false manifestation of the Holy Spirit leads to false religious excitement. Now, I believe that the next statement is probably one of the most important statements for us in these last days done in the great controversy, page 464. Before the final visitation of God's judgment. Before. Before what? The final judgment. Before the plagues. Before the plagues. Before the final visitation of God's judgment. Same thing. Upon the earth, there will be among the people of the Lord such a revival of primitive godliness primitive godliness, the latter rain experience, okay, where it, it will be such a basic relationship with us, it won't be anything fancy, it will just be heart searching, spending time with God, and not just with God, but, but with caring about other people, as has not been witnessed since apostolic times, so what happened on there is going to happen again, you know, they shared their belongings with each other, did they not, they washed out for each other, they cared for each other, they cared about other people, they cared about other people as being lost, so they went out and spread the word regardless of what the ramifications would be for their personal lives, that's the kind of thing this revival of primitive godliness is about, the latter end experience is the only thing that can bring this back to us, to the fullness that God wants us to be since apostolic times. The spirit and power of God will be poured out upon his children. I long for revival. I really do. Don't you? We need it so terribly bad so that life will have more meaning for all of us. The spirit of God will be poured out upon his children. Going on in great controversy, the enemy of the souls. Who's that? That's Satan, right? desires to hinder this work. What work? The latter rain experience, the pouring out of latter rain, the loud cry, the manifestation of God's work in, in people around. He, he wants to hinder the loud cry. And before the time for such a movement shall come, this is going to be done before the latter rain, before the loud cry. There will be a false revival before the latter rain, before the loud cry that will take place real soon. That is going to happen, my friends. People are going to cry out to God. We've got to fix these problems. The only way we need God. We need to get back to God. We need to do these things. Before the loud cry, before the latter rain, there will be this false revival that takes place. We'll come. We'll come. He will endeavor to prevent it from introducing a counterfeit. Where is it going to be introduced? In those churches. The counterfeit ain't, isn't going to be with President Trump. It's going to be in the churches, which will call upon the people of the world and the United States to, to come back to God in the way that they have indoctrinated their brains, which is basically going the wrong way. To those churches, those churches that are going the wrong way, that, that, that will be so susceptible to these things because they haven't relied on the word like you are going to rely on the word. They haven't had a presence with God to recognize the counterfeit. It will begin in these churches which can bring under his which he can bring under his deceptive power. These are the only churches that God that the devil can bring under under his deceptive power, those churches that are led astray. Those people that aren't spending time with God, that 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 those people that that realize that what we're doing here on Sabbath morning is not boring, but is actually something we badly need to really know what real Christianity is really about which will bring under his deceptive power, he will make it appear. Did you hear what I said? 
He will make it appear that God's special blessing is poured out upon them. Look, 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 look at God's got to be doing this. Look at these things that, were, that are going on. The devil desires to hinder the latter rain from being poured out. And desires to hinder the loud cry and to hinder the work of God. And he will do it all before the genuine outpouring of the Spirit takes place among you and me in the last days. Before the seven last plagues, before the loud cry, before the latter rain. The counterfeit does come before the genuine. It can happen in those churches which can bring, which you can bring under deceptive power who, have, who do not understand what real primitive godliness is about, what it really means to have a, a relationship with God. But he can't do it to us, at least here in Douglasville. I can't speak for other Seventh-day Adventist churches. I can't because so many modern ideas are being creep, creeping in to, the, to how to run church that entertainment becomes more, or, or the, the charisma of the, of the speaker or the pastor of the church becomes the center of their focus rather than Jesus Christ. They will think this is God's special blessing, but instead it's a counterfeit in their lives. It goes on in great controversy. There will be manifest what is thought to be great religious interest. Multitudes will exalt that God is working marvelously for them. When the work is, is that of another spirit, under a religious guise, Satan will seek to extend his influence over the Christian world. Look at what God is doing for us. God is blessing us. I mean, we're, in, we're an active church. We got action going on here. Not only dead churches that, that basically, you know, that basically are a bunch of old people. A bunch of boring old people. I mean, we don't need that stuff anymore. And the reason being is, like I said before, they're surrounding themselves with so much entertainment and so much, there's nothing wrong with playing a video game, but when your life becomes inundated with video games, when your life becomes inundated with Facebook and not God, work, God book, you know, come on. Multitudes, it says, multitudes. This ain't a small movement here that's going to happen, this false manifestation. Multitudes of people are going to be under this influence. A great number. But God is going to, going to begin his work too. Amen? God is going to bring, he's going to begin to stir his people out of Laodicea, out of a deep sleep. And those that have oil in their lamps are going to make it through. Those that do not have oil in their lamps are not going to make it through. God is going to lead them back to his word. And God is going to manifest through those humble people who, who give God all the glory. Miraculous signs and wonders will be done by them too. But it'll be a, whole, it'll be a more, more of a downplayed. It won't be where you've got the clowns dancing around and the fire-breathing uh, people and the, you know, the... The, the guy that picks up 10,000 pounds. It won't be that type of entertainment. It'll be humble people. It'll be a totally different uh, context. These things go on. You can't tell the difference if you're only looking at the externals. You can only tell the difference if you look at the, deeper character, the deep character work that God is doing in the hearts, minds, and lives of his people. You need to ask yourself, where is a... Re where is a, um, this revival leading to? When you look at a revival, whether it's in your church or some other denomination or whatever, when you look at, at, the, at this revival, you say, what is their revival leading to? Is, it leading to? is it leading to just signs and wonders? And look at me? And look at what God is doing to bless us? That we're the right people? Walk this way? Or is it one, is one of those of humble people who are seeking people to, to study God's word with them. Revival rooted in God's word and then leading to transformation of character. Is that part of what you're seeing in that revival? If it's not, then you're in the wrong revival. Is this revival, are, are the wrongs being made right among the people in that, because of that revival? Or is it just a, a big show going on? If it is, you're in the wrong revival. Is it leading to humility among the people that are participating in it? Or is it leading to look at me? If it look to me, you're in the wrong revival. If it's leading to kindness and love and gentleness toward other people rather than 
than the, than the stern look and holier-than-thou mentalities. If it's, the whole, if it's that, you're in the wrong revival, my friends. You know, God is planning to send a mighty revival to his church at the, at the end times. The Holy Spirit will be poured out powerfully, not just a drip, drip method, not just the drip coffee method, my friends. It will be an immersion in the fire of God, the, fire, the baptism of fire. It ain't going to be some small cake here. It'll be a big piece. The Holy Spirit will be poured out powerfully. The enemy desires to hinder his work and will introduce a counterfeit. He will introduce a false religious revival in the Christian churches. Satan, under a religious guise, will, make the world, will take the world captive, my friends. That is coming, my friends. It really is. God will not be caught off guard, my friends. He will lighten the world with his power, according to Revelation 18.1. Satan's last day great attack will be in the realm of religion. And God will work powerfully through his true church to, counter, to counteract that which goes on, which already has its foot planted before we even begin our work. Great Controversy 588 says this, through the agency of spiritualism, that's not a good thing. That's demonic spirits, okay? Through the agency of demonic spirits, Miracles will be wrought, the sick will be healed, and many undeniable wonders will be performed. The, difference, the question I ask you today, will you know whether it's from God or not? And the only way to know that is by having spending time with the Lord and spending time with his word to know what a counterfeit, what the real thing looks like so when the counterfeit comes, you won't even have to go to class for that. So we don't need to fear miracles of healing because God is has done it and will do it even more intensely in the last days. But when these miracles uh, are sought, rather than seeking to know God, when people want to go and, hey, I've got to go see this, this show, I've got to see this program. I mean, some of the, the most popular programs on TV today are reality TV programs and the supernatural. People, they're receiving Adventists who are still looking for UFOs, of all the crazy things. Why are you wasting your time on that stuff? So when the miracles are sought more than knowing God, seeking to know his will is not, and, and this, if you're not seeking God's will, then you know it's not from God. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone. That means some are. Not everyone. And we said there's multitudes in, in, the, in the counterfeit churches that will, so there's, there's going to be a lot of people involved in this in the not everyone category, okay? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Is the revival you're seeking, my friends, for a transformation of your heart, where you'll take God's word more to heart, to recognize the Ten Commandments that previously condemned you to hell, now because, you've, because they've led to Jesus Christ, there is no condemnation to those who are, against, who are in Christ Jesus. Are you in that experience, that last part, where the law now becomes, the law of liberty becomes your guide, where you want to obey the will of their Father in heaven? So when these miracles are sought, rather than seeking to know God, people will, will, be, will be going the wrong way because it will not involve following the will of God. Now here is the acid test which tells you if the miracle worker worker is empowered by God or Satan. Genuine miracles are accompanied by a sincere desire to do God's will, as revealed in his word. Counterfeit miracles are done by those who have little interest in doing God's will. How about you? Do you have any interest in doing God's will? I mean, really. Don't just tell me, yeah. What did you do last week that you know really is contrary to God's word? Are you genuinely interested in doing God's will? Because if you are, my friends, you are being put in the proper position to grow deeper and deeper in your love and relationship with Jesus Christ. If you are going purposely against God's will, that's a pretty dangerous thing, isn't it, Elder Carter? If you purposely are going against God's will because you have been so in this entertainment mode that you've got to be stimulated all the time emotionally because you've totally been pulled away from this quiet spending time with God and being with him and, and going, over, going over this word of God and praying that God's will be done in your life and giving him your plans that day and in the evening going through your day with him 
and in, in the morning saying, Lord, lead me to somebody if, that either let me know that, they're, that you're leading me to them or lead them to me, Lord, and let me be aware of it that I may do what you ask me to do. Counterfeit miracles are done by those who have little interest in doing God's will, and they are more interested in doing the miracle. I dare say that, that if we're not careful, a lot of our young people are going to fall into that category where they're looking for sensationalism to confirm a Christian experience. I mean, the carnal mind is against going against God's will. You know that. And until somebody's converted, will they ever begin to consider it? Friends, faith leads me to know Jesus. Do I have a heart longing for Jesus? Do you have a heart longing for Jesus? Matthew 7, 22, 23, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I declare to them, I never knew you. People have been so deceived that they never had a relationship with Jesus Christ. I mean, the other one's just as bad because the Bible says that, that if you deny Jesus Christ, your house, your house is swept clean. Guess what comes in? Demon possession. You don't have to be drooling at the mouth to be demon possessed, my friends. And then I will declare to them, I, will, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. We all know that what that means, where you know the law of liberty is not your guide. And you purposely go against it. It's not just, it's not just what you and I do when we have to ask for forgiveness of sin. Lawlessness is an outright animosity toward God. It's rebellion. I never knew you because you were rebellious people. You knew the which way to walk, but you didn't want to do it. You relied too much on, well, I'm, I'm okay down here, you know, in my Christian experience. If, if I'm okay down here, I don't need to be up here because faith of a mustard seed, that's all I need. My friends, that's not the way it goes. Don't be presumptuous about God, my friends. God wants to use you. God wants to use you in his plan. He has a plan for you and me. He wants you to make a difference in the world. Miracles, wonders, and signs do not substitute for God's will, my friends. They really don't. Beware of so-called religious revivals, which minimize the teachings of God's word, downplay doing God's will, dismisses obedience. Don't get wrapped up in this people. Well, that's legalism. Oh, that's legalism. You know, we're in the New Testament. That's legalism. You know, we bounced back. Our, our church has swung back and forth, even in the midst of those arguments. You know, we went from we were legalistic at one time, and then we swung the other way, where we're just cheap grace. And now we've got to get back in the middle, and I think we're getting real close. I really do. I think everybody get, is getting their ducks lined in a row as far as perception of real truth in this world. When the disciples sought for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Acts, number one, they opened their hearts to God in earnest prayer. Did they not? Did they? They did. They repented of their sins. They confessed their faults. They committed their lives to obeying God's word. They were passionate about living for Jesus and sharing his love with others, even to the giving of their own life. Jesus calls us to be passionate about doing his will, about knowing him, about coming to his presence, baptized in fire. And I say, Lord, I say to myself, and I hope you say this, come, Lord Jesus, come. Baptize us with fire in your presence that we may come closer to you, that we may not be subject to the counterfeit movement that is growing in the world today. And we've become so obvious that, that it's actually an exciting time to be in these times. It really is for me. Because I realize being in these times, the things that I see are fulfilling the prophecies, things that I've preached about all these years, and people just went, went na 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 to me. Elder Carter, you ever had anybody do that? Me? Say, no, that, that ain't going to happen. And God is calling his people in these last days, calling to cry out, say, Lord, come, Lord Jesus. But we know in order for him to come, he, something has to happen first. We have to sincerely seek our Lord and do our part for the great revival that is coming our way that will come on the heels, it seems, of the false revival that will take place first. The devil wants to prevent our revival, so he wants to fill the world, inundate it with all these deceptions. And unfortunately, many, I think, Seventh-day Adventists will be drawn into it, my friends. But keep praying for each other. Don't you be one of those people that, that takes the false for the true. 
and, and be closed-minded, become the worst enemy of the church as a result of that. Because we will be, we come face to face with him, just as Elijah asked for, show me your glory, or Moses said, show me your glory. Amen. We're going to have this song memorized by now, Penny. to remind you to please stay seated until one of the deacons releases you. We'll keep our social distancing for that time. Also remember that there'll be boxes for the children's offering, for missions and Sabbath school offerings, and for your regular offering out in the foyer. In the foyer. And don't linger. If you would, please just step right on out onto the yard if you want to, if you want to socialize for FaceTime, right? Heavenly Father, we do come to you praying very earnestly that the true revival would take place in our hearts and lives, and that we would be led by your Spirit and your Holy Word. And we pray that now that you will bless us and keep us, that you will make your face shine upon us and be gracious unto us, and that you will make your countenance upon us, and that you will give us peace now and forevermore. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.